When I first started Travel Fashion Girl in August of 2012, I'd been a long-term traveler backpacker for five years at that point. And one of my biggest goals with Travel Fashion Girl was to try to find functional travel clothing. And at that point, travel clothing was really outdoor clothing, hiking clothing, and it was very difficult to actually find cute and stylish outdoor clothes. Now, why would I wanna use outdoor clothing for travel, you ask? Well, as a long-term traveler back in the day, I was going to various destinations, to different climates, um, taking, you know, going to cities and mountains and taking it part of a different adventures. And ultimately, I learned that the fabrics used in this type of clothing was perfect for travel. However, what I also realized when I followed the instructions from the um, Thorn Tree Forum on Lonely Planet back in 2008 was that convertible pants and a quick dry tee from the outdoor shops back in 2008 was not what I wanted to wear in Auckland or Sydney. <laughs> well, they were totally fine to wear in when it was Machu Picchu or even you know in the jungles of Guatemala or Borneo, wherever it was. I didn't really want to wear this clothing in metropolitan cities. Now, not saying that you can't, but because I used to work in the fashion industry, fashion industry, this type of clothing isn't what I wear in my regular life. So why would I wear it while I was traveling? So it was really important to wear what you love. However, a lot of this clothing is actually awesome for travel. The key is to try to find a balance, like the top that I'm wearing right now, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a little bit. So I'm gonna share with you, not just about clothing from a hiking perspective, but also from a travel perspective as well. So before we get started, my name is Alex with Travel Fashion Girl, where we teach women how to travel stylishly light for any destination in the world. Please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up or a heart, please. And also, if you have any questions about the products today, the names or where to buy them, please visit travelfashiongirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live, particularly because I don't know the style names for each piece, <laughs> but we've gone ahead and put all the items there on the that page already with the corresponding colors and everything. So that way you know exactly what to find. Again, that was travelfashiongirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live. Side note, I'm really excited to be here. I really missed you guys. And thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to chatting about this and chatting about travel in general. So thank you. Um, now let's talk about travel for a quick moment. Travel right now. I did share a, a video about my feelings about traveling um, uh, several weeks ago. And the gist of it was that I was basically gonna play it by ear and not plan any international trips. My main focus, if I did choose to travel, was gonna be going to national parks. However, as much as I love and adore, adore, you have no idea how much I adore the national and state parks in Utah and Arizona and California, I also knew they were gonna be absolutely slammed. Let's face it, they're the most famous. They're not just, they're not the most beautiful in comparison to others, but actually they kind of are. But it's not just that they're beautiful, but they're also really popular. So I didn't want to go to those places knowing that it was going to be full of crowds. Um, so my goal when I started to think about, well, should I travel? Can I travel even in nature? Was I'd like to go somewhere where there was less people. And I'm not necessarily an off the beaten path kind of a traveler. I call myself an equal opportunity traveler that goes to touristy places and non-touristy places. But when it came down to this time, I think because um, I haven't traveled in so many months, I also really not just wanted to go somewhere less busy to avoid crowds, but also because I wanted to feel close to nature and just kind of also um, kind of regain some of the energy that I lost over the past few months. And really, I'm so glad that I did because it was the best decision that I did. I felt rejuvenated. It was good to move my body again. And I'm gonna preface this also by telling you, I'm not a girl that loves to camp. I grew up in Los Angeles, I'm a city girl, but I do love hiking. And in Los Angeles, we have tons of hiking trails just in the city, which is great. But I will not, I don't love tents and sleeping bags. I'm a cabin girl or an RV 
juicy girl, all of those types of things I'm fine with. So glamping is much more my style. So just so you know, if you're not a camper, don't worry, you don't have to be to visit the national parks. And actually that's one of the things that I really love about the national parks in the US is that they're very accessible to a variety of travelers. In fact, there's many that you can literally, if you don't wanna hike through a mountain or you don't wanna go through the entire um, national park, you can generally visit a lot of the main sites from the car. For example, the Painted Desert in Arizona is possible probably you could drive through and it's almost like a drive through experience, if you will, or the Petrified National Forest, which I love. I really highly recommend going to those places. Even the Grand Canyon, which I probably would avoid right now because it's so busy, but you can drive up. I remember I took my grandmother and my mother. They were so happy when I took them and when they saw it, but it was very accessible. I could drive up, park, and it was a short walk to actually get to the the main site. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more time actually hiking and getting into a little bit closer to nature, whether it's a day hike for an hour or a longer hike for several hours, this clothing is actually really good to consider. Let's talk about hiking clothing for a moment. Day hiking or just hiking for a couple of hours in LA, sure, yoga clothing, workout clothing, you could probably even do that in your jeans, easy. But when it's summertime and you're actually surrounded by trees and nature and potential snakes or whatever it is that you might be walking through, actually hiking clothing is a lot more practical. The first reason it's very practical is because of the breathability. When you're sweating, you're, you know, even if it's cool, colder weather, when you're trekking or hiking, even if it's an hour, but you start breaking a sweat. And if you have a regular, um, like, tea or just a cotton top or modal tea, whatever it is, it just starts, the sweat starts clinging to your body and it's really uncomfortable. So when I first went, so where, where did I go? Actually on this particular, um, these particular trips, I went twice to the Red River Gorge in Kentucky. That was the place that is absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend if it's not too far for you to drive, but it was the place where I went to get to get away recently. I spent a week there for my birthday last week, and then I went for two nights right before Memorial Day to kind of test out what travel was like. And the first time I went and tested it out, I didn't really have any hiking clothing because, well, I wasn't really planning to hang out in the US for, for so many months, and I didn't really plan and prepare the, the clothing. I only had my, um, my anatomy pants, which are awesome for hiking. So that was totally fine, but I took regular cotton tees or even like my J. Crew. 365 to go hiking and you know what it was really it was doable but it was really uncomfortable especially on my like when I did a four or five hour five mile hike um, on that first trip and I realized you know what it's Memorial Day weekend I'm gonna stock up on a bunch of clothes and I'm really happy I did and the good news is a lot of retailers still have um, really good discounts on the clothing but it was night and day difference between having a top that was breathable and just fresh and airy and I was able to go so comfortable versus having just that regular shirt that you have um, that you'd wear to grocery shop or wherever it was. So big benefits, comfort, breathability. And then if you're traveling long term, well, obviously they're lighter and you can easily hand wash them. The cabin where I stayed, you to, um, they didn't have washing machine or anything. So if I would have been there longer, I would have needed to hand wash. Um, and we'll talk about Marina wool in a little bit and why that's awesome because if you especially if you can't hand wash But these types of fabrics are great because you can pack them lighter. They feel good. They pack well and they're very practical So let's get in and start talking a little bit about the different items I'll give you a bit of a review tell you what I thought about them I did feel like some of them were better than others and I wanted to share the pros and cons of each I'm also going to quickly just remind you, if you want any more information about the products, please head over to travelfashiongirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live. And then I've given you a full breakdown on everything. First, I want to start with the pants and I'm not going to talk too long about them because you've heard about them all day long. So as I mentioned, for me, um, these are the Anatomy Andrea leggings. I have them here. You've heard about them a million times. You've got a ton of reviews about them on the blog and even on the YouTube channel. 
but th actually the one thing I haven't really shared with anybody is how much more I like these pants and the Skylar's. <laughs> I think that's one thing I didn't realize until recently because I've, th I've been throwing these on um, traveling with them more because of the elastic waistband, which has been great because there's been a 10 pound difference, maybe 15 pound difference in the past few months. So the elastic waistband is definitely a bonus for weight fluctuations when you're traveling or not traveling. Um, it's also comfortable for flights and air and sitting on a plane for hours. So I love that about it. I also like the fact that because of that, it also, um, for flexibility, it also has this, um, softer fabric around the knee area. It doesn't really fall on the knee, but it's just kind of around it. So when you're sitting down for a long time, there's a little bit more flexibility. And it's also ankle length with a nice zipper detail. Why the ankle length? I love because I'm five foot two, so it means I don't have to tailor them. They fit me perfectly. And if you're taller, well, they fit you like the way they're supposed to, like an ankle pant. But they're cute, they're stylish. I've worn them for everything. I usually wear them. I always, almost always travel with them now because um, between the Spanx leggings and these, they become my go-to in-flight pants. But what I like about these more than the Spanx is that I can, you know, on a whim, go and go for a day hike or even work out. I think I've even taken these to the gym or whatever it was when I wasn't really planning to. So versatility is key. Now, with regards to hiking, are they comfortable for hiking? Well, the fabric is awesome and Again, this goes back to why I've been talking about anatomy since 2012 because the fabric is light. It's great for travel, which means it's also great for hiking. It's, um, see, it's that, it's a very lightweight fabric. It's not necessarily breathable, but I was wearing them to hike in about 85 to 90 degree weather. And I was surprised it really didn't bother me because more so I felt hotter on, um, on top and that's where I had these tops and I felt I still felt really comfortable so I don't mind them I have taken them to Egypt and worn them in hotter places but to be honest with you I'd rather not wear pants in really hot humid locations anyway but for hiking I don't love wearing shorts because I'm really clumsy and I run into everything and I want to scratch up my legs or get bit by a million different things so I do wear long long trousers pants while I'm hiking or I'm in nature so these work perfectly fine another thing is actually I got mud all over myself because um, when I first went to Red River Gorge it was it had been raining and then as I was traversing through the rocks and trying to bring myself down I kind of sat on muddy water and I thought to myself oh, great whatever and then I realized these pants are awesome when it comes to stains and also for, um, for if you get them wet by accident and everything else. So I was able to literally within 10 minutes, the mud had dried, I just wiped it off and that was it, which is awesome. That is the difference between wearing like a regular legging, like a Zella legging or a workout legging, wearing a cotton pant and wearing a technical fabric when you're doing things like this. Because it, if it is colder, let's say it was in 95 degrees, you don't wanna get stuck with wet clothing that isn't um, moisture wicking or doesn't dry quickly and then you're just walking around with moist, wet clothing all the time. It's also um, dangerous if it is colder weather because it can give you hypothermia in certain situations and whatnot, but that's extreme situation. But can't recommend this enough. I'd say definitely avoid, if you can, wearing regular workout clothes when you're on a hike. And these pants are awesome for a million reasons. And if you want to learn more, we'll go ahead and share the link to the full review in the comments. Um, before I continue on, just a quick note. Yes, we will be recording this Facebook Live and we're going to be republishing it on YouTube later on in case anybody's interested to watch it. Um, please take a moment to give it a, um, a thumbs up, a heart. For more details, head over to TravelFashionGirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live. And if you're just tuning in and you don't know who I am, my name is Alex with Travel Fashion Girl where we teach women how to travel stylishly like for any destination in the world, including outdoors, mountains, and trails. So the next item on the list is something I'm super excited about. I'm a little bit in love with Eddie Bauer right now. And these, the Eddie Bauer legging, I think they're called trail leggings. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. I was looking, I didn't want to wear a convertible pant. I wanted, you know, I love these because they have a slim fit. They're a tapered fit. 
and but I knew also that leggings like a Zella legging or regular workout legging weren't practical so when I found out that Eddie Bauer had a trail legging I thought well you know what I'll give it a whirl it's on sale why not I love them so much so 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 much <laughs> And I was actually scared that it was they were going to be super hot um, in comparison to the anatomy pants when I was when the weather was so hot. But actually, they were really comfortable. I was shocked. They're um, they're really good material. They're a little bit they're thick, but somehow they're they didn't scorch me up. I want to also note though I was kind I was hiking in the mountains, kind of in within the tree so I wasn't in direct sunlight the whole time for several hours so maybe it'd be different if I was but highly recommend them they have two pockets here on the sides um, they're just they look like a regular legging but they're a little bit thicker and they have more practical properties when it comes to hiking especially if you happen to brush by something you don't want to um, I didn't really have to worry about what I was walking through or I had to worry again moisture wicking so in case I were to start raining or if I were to fall or <laughs> get some mud on me then I'd be fine um so what else about them the color they have several colors I chose the DK um uh, I forgot what it's called I thought I had put it on the blog I'm looking right now at the blog post um I didn't put the color but they are oh yeah DK I want to see like a green color but I really love them I was trying to fig figure out a color palette that I'd like to wear that I want that I feel good in and also I'd like to wear in nature and I found that my neutral greens and olives work for me so I really liked it can't recommend it enough ladies as a legging and obviously the benefit of this is that it's a legging you can wear it on the mountains wear it at home wear it for working out whatever it is so that's the versatility that i'm looking for now with regards to travel if i was going to be tra using these to travel and i'd also want to wear them for example to walk around um, to travel around a city personally i i'm not an active i don't love active wear for me as clothing i like active wear when i'm working out or doing outdoor activities so i'd probably choose a more neutral solid color so that way it doesn't look like like a hiking clothing it looks just more like regular clothing so big thumbs up to those trail leggings by Eddie Bauer. Um, this is another top. Okay, so out of all of these, I want to say that this is actually my favorite hiking top. It's also by Eddie Bauer. I'm wearing it in black. It had awesome reviews and um, a variety of colors. And everybody even said that it was so nice that it could somebody wore it even with a blazer and jeans and heels to a nice event. I didn't believe that. But now I do because I'm wearing it here with my leather shorts and a nice necklace. So I know you can totally dress it up, um, at least in the black, which makes it perfectly versatile for national parks, hiking, working out, traveling. You can put, wear this with a skirt, wear it with jeans, whatnot. It's it's awesome. It's so lightweight. The fabric is breathable. It's nice. It's light. It has a really nice ribbed um, design here on the edges and I really love it very lightweight very practical again if I was gonna go just hiking love all the different colors very fun if I also want to buy a piece that's if I'm only gonna choose one item so it can be versatile enough to wear in various places I'd go with the black solid color or another neutral avoid um, the way that you can kind of choose the best colors and prints the best colors to wear hike, for hiking clothing that you can also wear in cities and dress up are the ones that are not um, are solid colors versus this versus um like the um, heather type of look so this a few notes about it i'm five foot two so i pretty much have to tailor everything and that was one of the things that i was that i didn't love about all this clothing because i felt like it was a little bit larger as you can see here it kind of just sits a little bit loose and I'm wearing the size small so normally with tops I wear either an extra small or a small depending on what it is um, if I need a little I need a little bit more room so then this one you'll see it's a little bit loose here which is fine but I do like these tops and I like them enough to make them staples in my wardrobe so what I you'll see the back of it right now which I'm wearing with a um, convertible, with a convertible um, bra. So what I'm planning to do because it's a little bit loose is I'm going to have them tailored and taken up here at the, at the at the little whatever it's called um, seam, 
and that way it'll fit me a lot smoother. And that's something that I have to do pretty much to all my tops. I usually take them up up here or my dresses. But the bonus with this top is that, best part, look, you don't see my bra. It is almost impossible to find a tank top that's not so low that your bra doesn't show. I find it so frustrating. So this is another reason why I love this. So it's just ever so slightly just um, shows my um, bra if I'm moving around like this because it's loose. But again, once I have it tailored and it's done, it'll fit me perfectly. So love, love, love this design. It is on, um, it's called the Eddie Bauer Infinity Rib Tank, and I have it in DK time and also in the black color. I'd love to get this in more colors, so as soon as they have my size, I will. It is very long as well, so if you like a longer fit top, then this is also longer. I probably would stick with the small versus the extra small in my size, in my case and just get this tailored, and that's kind of usually the way it goes, but best top. It's on sale, I think, as well right now. Like, I forgot what the, the discount is. Um, another Eddie Bauer top. So I wanted to try, I prefer short sleeves because I'm a sweaty person. I prefer wearing sleeveless shirts to short sleeve tops when it's hot. But um, I, but I wanted to test it out and it was on sale. So I bought the t-shirt the version as well. This is a different fabric. It's a lot more lightweight. You'll notice again that this one has a very, the type of pattern that's very common in outdoor clothing. But what I like about the Eddie Bauer clothing, it's very subtle. So you don't kind of, I almost feel like with outdoor clothing, they either make, they design it for a man and then just make it in a smaller size for a woman. And it just, it's very boxy and shapeless. And I was after a top that had a little bit more shape and a little bit more femininity, because guess what? I'm not a man and I don't want to have a shirt that's made for one. So this was nice because it's lightweight. It had a V-neck, so it's a bit more of a, um, a bit more of a classic design and not as boxy and loose as many other tops. I found it very hard to find an outdoor type tee that didn't have, that wasn't boxy, that had a smaller um, sleeve because I find that just having the sleeve a little bit shorter or at an angle makes it a little bit more flattering. And if you prefer a longer sleeve, just make, um, pay attention to the shape of it because you might, I know not, we, as women, we do sometimes try to hide our arms, but in hiding them sometimes with a certain sleeve, it can almost, um, it just looks very masculine in many ways. So I really wanted to find that perfect sleeve. And this one's very nice. It's very light. Again, I like this pattern for outdoors. If I was going to wear something, you can probably get away with wearing this fabric in a solid color in a city, making it very versatile as well. So very cool. Another Eddie Bauer piece. I like it. Quick dry, airy, breathable, impacts light. Moving on now to Icebreaker. So Icebreaker is a popular brand for travel. People have loved Icebreaker for years, for dresses, for tops, for everything. The thing with Icebreaker is that it's really expensive. Why? Because the clothing is made out of merino wool. And merino wool, as many of you who have been in the travel fashion bill community for years know, is the number one fabric for travel. Why is merino wool so awesome? Well, we've got tons of content telling you about that on the blog, travelfashiongirl.com. But we, um, the main, the gist of it is that merino wool, I'll just use the t-shirt, merino wool packs light, it's moisture wicking, it works for warm weather, for cold weather, and the secret is to packing light and traveling a long time is not washing your clothing, re-wearing clothes. So you want to avoid fabrics like cotton that absorb, um, sorry, stretchy fabrics and not 100%, 100% featherweight cotton is okay, but the ones that are more like t-shirt fabrics, those just absorb scents, they absorb sweat, they absorb everything. So they're not really practical for travel. This is why a lightweight or a fabric like this is awesome. I was sweating, nothing was stuck to me, it was fine. If I was traveling, this is just a plain black tee that'll go with everything. I met a girl in Bali that had been traveling with one of these, just one. For, she said she hadn't washed it in three weeks and she didn't smell and it didn't, it just, it worked and it still looked clean and she convinced me. I didn't believe her at the time. This was in 2013, but she sold me on it and it is 
completely worth it. The key with merino wool, if you're using it to travel, ladies, is do not plan to wash it unless you have time for it to dry because some, depending on the weight of the fabric, can take a little bit longer. And if you're moving quickly, um, then it doesn't make sense. So anyway, merino wool, awesome, but expensive. It's one of those things where you really have to buy the pieces that will be very flexible and last a long time. I usually put mine in the, in the hand wash cycle on the washing machine and then air dry it. That's how I do it. Um, and again, if you're looking to get pieces because they're expensive and you don't, and you want to just get something versatile, you know, if you're going to get one, stick with the neutrals versus the brights unless your wardrobe is bright, choose the colors that make sense with the majority of your wardrobe. In this case, I went all out because it was Memorial Day weekend and things were on sale and icebreaker is so expensive, I never wanna spend the full price on it. So I took advantage and I think I either, sh I think I bought everything on Moose Jaw, on the Moose Jaw website. They also had it on, Eddie um, on sale at um, icebreaker website. And I shopped also on Amazon because I think they had different price points. So I just bought a couple of their places. Starting, okay. Very pleased with Icebreaker. Things I didn't like is that I felt that the clothing was really baggy and shapeless. Super disappointed. And I did feel like as I wore it more, it actually looked even bigger on me, which I don't know if you, principles of styling, the bigger the clothing you put on yourself, the, the just it just makes you, um, you just drown into it basically, no matter um, what your size is. You should always try to find clothing that fits you and your body shape and size versus trying to, you know, wear clothing that's baggier unless you're styling it in a certain way. Um, and if you have any questions about specifically about any of these products, head over to travelfashiongirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live and then you'll be able to get links to all the items and the product names as well. So these are two different products. I was desperate to add some color into my life. I love my blacks and my neutrals, but I wanted some color. So I decided to, to try some color and I, I'm glad I did. I like the colors, they're great. And I also went with a size small in each of these. I really wish I would have gotten the extra small. This, this style, which is the Icebreaker Comet Light Singlet. I preferred this style, the way it fit me versus the orange red one, which is the Icebreaker Amplify Razorback Tank. The reason is because I think it just had a slightly better fit, but at the end of the day, after I've been wearing these to hike all day, is that they both got really big. This one looked loose to begin with, and then it looked even bigger, and this one ended up drowning me. It looked like I was wearing um, somebody else's clothing. So I'm gonna say with the icebreaker tanks, you might wanna consider choosing, if you're in between sizes, going with the with the smaller size. So that's my regret with these. I wish I would've gotten them an extra small. I don't know if they're as easy to tailor as the other ones, so it's a shame. Um, and even if I'm hiking, I don't really know. I still wanna look, I still wanna look good as well. So if I had to choose between these two, I'd choose the Eddie Bauer top instantly every time to, and, and I'll post some pictures of myself wearing these so you can see the difference as well. But I'd love them in a smaller size. However, putting looks aside, the fabric was great. Unfortunately, just like every other tank top available in the market right now, unlike the Eddie Bauer one, this was very low as well. So it was fine because I was hiking and I was my sports bra could show a little bit. That's fine. It's not the end of the world, but I really would find it difficult to want to be able to wear these. Um, I would be able to wear them somewhere else. So that's it. That's a little bit of feedback about that, but they're cool light, so breathable. I was just the night and day difference between wearing this fabric and wearing just the regular tank tops that I had on the previous trip was insane, worth every penny. Um, this was ice has icebreaker cool light tank in Comet Light Singlet. Between these two, prefer this one, love the color. Um, and the practical fabric obviously is wonderful. And then this one is the uh, Amplify Razorback Tank, also icebreaker. So, highly recommend for hiking check out the sizing now this is also an icebreaker top and i really like the blue color they didn't have it on the icebreaker website or moose jaw so then i went and bought this on amazon where i could find it 
This has the opposite problem. This is a size small and it felt too snug. I really wish I had gotten a medium in this one. And I think I, um, regardless. So for this, I would recommend sizing up. This is the Icebreaker Siren Marina Wool Tank. It had a ton of great reviews, has lots of colors. But what I did like about this is it pretty much covered my bra straps. Uh, which is shocking because it's so hard to find a tank top that the bra strap actually is covered. This one, the armhole was in a good place. So if you're looking for a classic tank that you can wear to go hiking, to layer underneath other clothing, if you like wearing tank tops on their own, then this would be a great top. Just maybe size up if you're, um, yeah, maybe just size up if you don't you want to have a less tight fit um, yeah, less fitted type <laughs> top. So again, this was a Siren Merino wool tank. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for this one in other colors. I think it'd be a great classic tank top to wear in different scenarios and, um, in a, in some neutrals so I could wear it and have it, have it be a staple in my wardrobe as well. Between all of these items, just for comfort and, um, I probably would rather go hiking in one of these because even though this was a closer fit to my body, this was much more breathable and airy and just so nice when it's 95 or 90 degrees out and you're sweating and you've been hiking for hours. Lastly, I got the, I also wanted to try a tee and I wanted to see if I could find a merino wool tee that could work as well as like the J. Crew 365 tee because obviously I love the J. Crew 365 tee, but if I want some one piece that's going to be versatile and I can wear on the trail or in a city, it would be a merino wool, not the Drake J. Crew tee. So it just depends on what you're looking for. I want to try to get a balance of function and fashion. And in this case, I tried the Icebreaker Merino in size small. Very comfortable, very nice. Again, a larger fit, but I do like the styling of it as well. So if you're looking for something for a classic tee that's going to take you all over the place, this is it. You'll see that it just doesn't, it looks like regular fabric. What I love about these, it doesn't have a logo on them. So you could wear, dress them up. Like I have my leather shorts on with this one versus something like this. It would look, look a lot more casual. Maybe better at the beach than um, paired with my leather shorts. So lastly, with the clothing, I also wanted to share um, a yoga top because this is not an outdoor clothing item. It's something I bought on Amazon just I was looking for a top and it's a it's the Yogalicious ultra soft lightweight razor back top on Amazon now This the reason why I'm showing this to you aside from hiking clothing Because if you're not planning to have an extended trip having extended trips outdoors I would recommend and you're have you're going on just the occasional hike or you're going hiking for an hour that it's definitely okay to wear fitness clothing. That's a good option because it's still moisture wicking. It's still gonna be much better than throwing on that regular cotton tank um, or that modile tank, that soft t-shirt that you have. This is gonna just be much more comfortable to hike in because essentially a hike is a workout. You know, you're moving around, even if it's relatively flat or easy, then you wanna have that, um, that comfort and comfort is everything ladies you know that we like our comfort and this is a nice tank highly recommend it for yoga now for hiking if i had to choose i would still 100 percent go with the icebreaker or the eddie bauer top but again a, high, um, a fitness top will do in a pinch if you don't have well, some of these or if you don't want them now if you i'm going to cover my boots and my socks because somebody asked me about them. Um, but if you're interested in any of the products that I just talked about, head over to travelfashiongirl.com forward slash Facebook dash live, and you'll be able to get information about every single one of them. So my boots, a lot of people have asked about my hiking boots and I'm going to say how much I love my hiking boots. They are, they've been amazing for so many reasons, but they're also Really, I'm gonna buy some other ones <laughs> because they're so heavy. So my hiking boots, I bought them in England back in 2014 because um, I was gonna go do the Everest base camp in Nepal in the winter. So these are Mendel, I think it's a German brand. 
there, as you can see them, they're waterproof and they've been good because it was muddy. So from a very practical aspect, if you're hiking in more, um, in colder weather, in more hardcore terrain, these are awesome. They're waterproof. I never slipped. I didn't need any, I didn't even need trekking poles. I love them. I could step in mud, water, river, whatever it was. And when I was doing the, um, had such good traction because I was doing a more moderate, more difficult um, treks, especially that with higher inclines or things that maybe I just went the wrong way and I'm stuck in the mud, I don't know. But the, the tread on these, you can see I literally just came back from the trip. The tread on these is awesome. I love them. Very expensive. I didn't want to spend that much money on them back in the day, but because I was going to Nepal in the winter for Everspace Camp, I really needed something very sturdy. So these are my hiking boots. Love them, but they're so heavy because they're way too hardcore for a national park trail right now, especially in the summer. So at the end of the day, my feet are exhausted. I excuse myself figuring, hey, more weight on my feet means I'm getting more of a workout, which is fine. I enjoyed them, but for longer hikes, I, I'm actually going to be buying um, a, a pet, pair of hiking boots recommended by one of the readers. They're the Merrill hiking boots, uh, Merrill out. Whoa. Meryl something hiking boots that are waterproof. <laughs> she said that they're lightweight. I like these hiking boots and I like the Merrells that she recommended because I like the just the leather brown classic look. So they look a lot, so it's not, they look more like boots versus like outdoor shoes, if that makes sense. So I prefer that, that neutral look and I like them. And I also like a brown because I wear um, gray and black and have so many dark colors. I find that a dark brown boot like this is a great neutral to wear with everything. So from a style point of view as well. Now, um, yeah, so that's where I'm going to be getting the hiking boot. You can find a link to that on the post, but absolutely love them. When you're buying a hiking boot, make sure that you do get something that is waterproof because even for example, the first time I went, it had been raining. So it was a bit more muddy and slushy. But if you're, and if you're hitting the trails, if you're just staying on paved paths, then obviously you don't need anything that hardcore, you don't need to get waterproof or anything. But I was so grateful that I had these on because I could go through anything and I didn't have to worry about slipping. And again, I'm clumsy and I've actually slipped previously um, where and I, I do use trekking poles, for example, when I went to Machu Picchu or um, other places because of slipping and then I've hurt my knees in the past. So I felt so free with these boots because the tread was so good. So something really to pay attention to. With hiking boots, we do have an article on the blog on how to choose hiking boots, so we'll put a link to that. Um, but if you're gonna be doing a light hike, paved paths, regular cross trainers, and your, you know, your regular um, workout shoes should be fine. For me, hitting the trails on this, I was very glad to have proper hiking boots and I'll be investing in better ones. Um, sorry, lighter ones, not better ones, lighter ones. Um, the Merrill ones that I'm looking at are 170 bucks and I'm kind of hoping they're gonna go on sale like everything else is right now, so that's what I'm waiting for. Um, hiking, my socks, my hiking socks are actually some recommended by you, Travel Fashion Girl readers. They're the Kirkland um, trail socks and they've been awesome. I actually bought them when I lived in England um, because they were merino wool blend and they were very warm. And for being, considering the merino wool, they're um, and a bit thicker, they're actually pretty light. They're pretty, um, they're small for how warm and practical they are. So what I did is I wore, I have several of these and again, they're the, Kirk, no, Signature Trail Sock by Kirkland, and um, you can find a link to that, to their Amazon thing on the blog. Lastly, people have asked about my sunglasses. I only have, I think, one pair of sunglasses at this point. I have the Ray-Ban, um, just Ray-Ban polarized sunglasses. The reason why they're polarized is because I, I'm a scuba diver and I love spending time on boats and on the water. So I realized how damaging the sun had been to me one in I think 2015, I spent a lot of time and my my eyes almost felt like they were burnt, like they were sunburnt. So after that, I invested in a pair of Polaroid sunglasses so that this is what I travel with. Always you'll see me with my Ray-Ban <laughs> Polaroid sunglasses. I love, 
I think it's classic. Don't mind if they're in style or not. Just, you know, that's the nice thing about figuring out the stuff that you like because it doesn't matter if it's in, in, on trend or not. You just like them because they always work for you. So that wraps, wraps up my hiking outdoor clothing review. I have one last thing to mention before I head on out. Yesterday I announced on the Facebook group that we are officially closing out Compass Rose Travel Accessories unfortunately um, due to the global travel situation. So we've marked them down to 30%, marked down the Compass Rose packing cubes and the secret bra wallet to 30% off. You can get them on Amazon. Um, we're just basically gonna keep them in t or keep them until they sell out, but we're not planning to manufacture anymore. Unfortunately, it's just a decision that I think um, a lot of small businesses are having to make right now. And as much as I love the packing cubes, and I had really cute new packaging. I was very excited about it. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to hear that so many people have found the packing cubes to, to be awesome and that you've enjoyed them. And in case you're not familiar with them, they are um, the Compass Rose is our brand, Travel Fashion Girl brand, and they, it's a four piece set of carry on size packing cubes. So the only packing cubes in the market that are actually sized for the width to fit a carry on suitcase because all the other ones are a little bit too long. Plus, they're also color coded and they're numbered. So each of them have a number and there's different ways for you to use them. I have a whole packing system and a way that we explain on the website on compassrosetravelaccessories.com and also um, with on, on YouTube and everything else. They are actually very versatile and the more important thing than the size of clothing with the packing cubes is the type of clothing that you choose. So you can use this for winter clothing, summer clothing, size two, size 24. And I actually have some videos on YouTube that show the different ways to showing different clothing sizes and different um, seasons and ways to use them as well because it's, packing inside of them. It's for example, you know, if you're choosing a t-shirt that's made out of like a regular cotton, like, you know, just a regular average t-shirt fabric, no matter what size you are, it's always going to be a lot heavier and thicker to pack versus choosing something in a very practical fabric. So even more so more important than the packing cues is the, the clothing that you're packing, which obviously travelfashiongirl.com is the website to learn all about the right clothing to travel with. Um, so and just letting you know if anybody's interested we still have them available we have a limited stock left on the bra secret bra wallets um and i don't have one on me right now but the packing cubes are still there they're available on amazon we'll keep selling them as long as we have them in stock it'd be great um this is a great opportunity to get them they're below cost so not only are you getting a great deal you're able to use them when you're hiking rving they're awesome actually um i've had RV trips, boating trips, car trips, and they're actually really practical to um, not just downsize and compress your suitcase if you're using them um, the way that in the strategies I've shown on YouTube, but you can show, but you can use them in so many different ways to organize, including a backpack I used. I think I carried like a 15 or 20 liter day pack with three of the packing cubes to do the four day hike in Machu Picchu with my clothing. And it was probably, um, the clothing I packed was less than this, like half the items in here probably on the trip and but with my fleece and whatnot. So they're very practical. We've got a ton of videos on YouTube that show you how to use them if you're not familiar. I've got all these strategies. They really are the secret to packing carry-on only because they help you with my methods, my methods, they help you compress everything and get them in here. Um, over 20 million women have used packing cubes to travel to downsize carry-on. So it it's um we're sad to see them go but unfortunately that's the situation now many people have asked if travel fashion if, tra we're, if travel fashion girl is also closing and for the life of me i will do all my very best to keep travel fashion girl going as long as possible but unfortunately compass rose at this time we have to say goodbye to that so we're putting links in the comments if you're interested in taking advantage of the closing out price 30 percent off um and i think a few just I think since we haven't been on Facebook Live, I will quickly update you guys a little bit personally on some stuff before I head out. 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed. For anybody that's going to step out for the moment, hopefully you've enjoyed the recap on the outdoor clothing. Can't recommend enough to check out National Parks right now. We have a ton of articles on Travel Fashion Girl giving you camping tips, hiking tips, how to hike with your pets, and all that. Lots of great content. What to pack for Joshua Park, what to pack for the Smoky Mountains. We've got all the information on there, so make sure to check it out. Lots of good stuff. And as far as what I'm doing right now, well, I've actually been quarantining in the U.S. for the past few months. I am planning to fly back home this month, so I'll report back to let you know what the flying process has been like. One of the TFG team members has been to um, a resort in Cancun recently. She's also going to be sharing how the experience is to go to resorts right now. I think Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Cabo, different beach destinations in, in Mexico are opening up and the Caribbean are starting to open up because a lot, of them, a lot of European countries are not opening up for non-EU or non-neighboring countries. So unfortunately right now with the US, if you're interested in traveling, you've got the US and of course varying um, rules and regulations in the States. Canada, you can't go into Canada, but Canadians got, have got a beautiful country as well, which is great. And then, but you could fly into Mexico, um, not travel by land, that's closed, but you could fly into Mexico. The same principles, just, you know, if you're choosing to travel, practice social distancing, practice, um, make smart choices that make sense to you. Make smart choices that make sense to protect not just your health, but um, to protect the spread of a potential illness that can make things even worse. That's all. You know, that's all the thing. And not everybody's traveling. Some people are traveling locally. My best advice is definitely even going to a local park for the day. Wear a mask or don't wear a mask. If I'm the nice thing about the parks that I've gone to is that they haven't, there haven't really been a lot of people on the trails. So I didn't feel like I needed to wear a mask because I wasn't close to anybody. So that's kind of what I was looking for. But if you're choosing to go somewhere else or on a plane or anything, I think um, then you might want to take some precautions. I actually think I did get coronavirus in March because I'd gone to New York and Los Angeles, but because there's limited testing, I never got tested, but I didn't, I kind of suspected it, but then it was the lack of smell and taste thing that I was like, oh, don't think I've been able to smell or taste for a, little, a week. That's odd. So I think I had it. And the reason was I was actually wearing a mask back in, um, before you were even required to, um, you were, and the, there was a pilot sitting next to me and he coughed on my, like, while I was having food. And I was thinking, oh my God, this is so not okay. I'm doing my best to like take care of myself. But I don't know if it was that moment or, you know, in, in the other situations where luckily if I did have it, it was very mild and it wasn't, and I in a quarantine and I stayed in for a few months. So I wasn't impacting other people, but it's just things to keep in mind. And I have an article that gives more information about that also on Travel Fashion Girl. So a quick, up, so that's my quick update. I'll be hopefully coming back on here on Facebook Live and also Instagram. Thank you for your patience with, um, with me and the situation and everything's just kind of rolling with all the different punches and trying to, I think everybody's trying to um, make the best of what everything's brought to them in 2020. And I actually have some very exciting things coming up for Travel Fashion Girl in the coming months. If you've stayed on this long, I will give you the official reveal right now. Spoiler alert, I'm starting a podcast in the coming this summer, so I'm excited about that. The podcast is gonna be focusing on sharing topics, empowering women to travel, sharing um, women like yourselves, like me, just you know, women that are in the community that are doing things that they didn't think that they could. People, women that have found that travel has empowered them in different ways and how, why it's empowered them. And I've said many times that travel has the power to transform your life if you let it. Because right now, a lot of travels become Instagram and I'm gonna go to Angkor Wat with a beautiful dress, even though it's hot as hell and you're gonna die being in there just with all this beautiful gown for a picture. And I really, um, I really wanna, emphasize why travel was life-changing to me and it was because it was the experience and more a lot of the personal growth and 
I think one of the readers on the community said how it was in the moments of challenge where you really grow and meeting people and all that. So those are the types of things and stories that I'd love to talk about on the podcast. And if anybody has a podcast or anybody has a story that they'd like to share that you'd like to share on the podcast about, um, that you think that you that would be inspirational to other women and women that think that they might not be able to travel alone, women that might not have traveled previously and now they're ready to go and they don't know where to start. If you have a story that you'd like to share, please send me a message. I'd love to know, but that's what's going on. Travel Fashion Girl podcast is coming soon to you as soon as I can go back home and get my podcast mic. <laughs> so that's in the works. So there's your spoiler alert for everybody that hung out long enough on the Facebook Live. I hope I'm excited about it. I hope you guys like it. So make sure to leave me um, a comment or message me if you'd like to be on it, if you have any requests for story ideas. And now that I'm back on Facebook Live, if you'd like some tips on other things as well. So... Thank you so much for hanging out with me today for a very long time. I just realized what time it is for a very long time. I'm really excited to hang out with you guys again, which is probably why I have hung out with you for so long. I don't want to let you guys go. And um, I'm looking forward to being back on Facebook Live soon. I've got different things planned, including tips on how to pack for RVs, how to travel with RVs, how to um, pack for a boat and packing for Playa and Cancun and I've got a bunch of beach things that I had to share with you before but they're sitting at my place in Playa so things are coming up thank you for being a part of it thank you for all your support for your love for your community for being so open-minded really with what's going on and you know you've given me the ability to share on this platform and to share more than just packing you've all inspired me to do that it feels like you were all empowered through the act of packing and now you've inspired me to do more and give more and you go yeah so you are my inspiration to keep going so thank you so much thank you for hanging out my name is Alex we travel fashion girl and we teach women how to pack stylishly light for any destination in the world see you soon thank you for joining me